One of the most common tasks in furniture making is gluing up panels. Virtually every medium to large project requires a panel glue up. Top panels, side panels, door panels, tabletops, desktops, countertops. If you're working with solid wood, you're often gluing narrow boards together to make wider panels. Since this is such a common task, I'd like to spend a little time offering some tips to help make your next panel glue up go more smoothly and perhaps help you achieve better results. The first and perhaps most important step is selecting the right boards to create your panel from. This shouldn't be an afterthought. Panels are often the most visible parts of the project. You should set aside the best stock for your panels before selecting boards for your other project parts. What makes good panel stock? Well, it depends on the look you desire. If it's a rustic piece, you may not care how they look. Knots could be filled with epoxy. They may even add character. You may not even be concerned with the grain blending from one board to the next. But most of the time, you'll want a large panel to look as much like a single board as possible. This may mean experimenting with the orientation of different boards to find the perfect combination. Two boards with straight grain along the edge will likely blend together better than those with wavy grain. But with patience and a willingness to maybe waste a little more wood in exchange for a better appearance, you should be able to find a combination that looks pleasing to the eye. For example, while these drawer fronts are not glued together to make a single panel, they well illustrate how boards that did not naturally grow together can be made to appear as if the grain flowed through a single slab. Many sources tell you to alternate the direction of the growth rings from board to board. The idea is since boards are most likely to cup away from the center of the tree, you might end up with one giant cup if all those rings face in the same direction. Whereas alternating the rings might result in a slightly wavy but relatively flat panel over time. I don't dispute that conclusion. In fact, you see that practice in a lot of antique furniture. But I don't think it's necessary nowadays when we have modern climate controlled homes that reduce humidity's effect upon furniture. Especially because in most cases, tabletops are often attached to a solid frame with fasteners which allow for lateral wood movement, but still hold the panel down and keep it from cupping. Other panels may be kept flat with the addition of breadboard ends or a frame that goes around a cabinet door making a frame and panel. I believe you should orient your boards to achieve the best possible appearance rather than worrying about the direction of the annual rings. Once you decide how you arrange your boards to make the panel, label them so you may get them back in the same order later. If you're going to the trouble to hide the seams in your panel by matching the grain, you definitely don't want any gaps in those seams. A table saw with a good blade can produce a glue ready edge, but only if it's properly tuned to reduce blade marks. Even a scorch on a board's edge can produce a visible gap in a seam. A jointer can produce cleaner edges. In fact, that's what jointers got their name from. They're tools for creating edge joints. Whether you use a jointer or a table saw, however, you must be sure the edge is made square to the surface of the board. This means checking your blade and checking your fence ahead of time. Don't assume they're square. Check them before you start. Some jointer fences are difficult to get and keep square. A solution to that problem may be jointing connecting boards together by folding their labeled faces toward each other. Any angle that may be created on the edges will cancel itself out as they are unfolded and brought back together. Sometimes, try as you might, you can't get perfect edges from a machine. We already discussed how a table saw may create gaps in a joint. Some jointers can also create a rippled edge due to the curved shape of the cutter head. This effect may be reduced by moving boards across the cutter head more slowly to increase the rates of cuts per inch. If you're still having difficulty getting a seamless joint with power tools, perhaps the solution is a little more old school. Often a couple passes with a hand plane while two boards are mounted face to face in a vise will clean up any flaws left by the jointer or the table saw. A hand plane will ensure the edge is straight and consistent while again the folding trick will eliminate any angle on the mating edges. If your edges are properly prepared, you do not need a great deal of glue nor clamping pressure to join boards into a panel. Cover one edge fully, just thick enough so you can no longer see the wood grain through the glue. This will be sufficient. You need not add glue to the other mating edge. 
That said, some people just do not feel confident unless they apply glue to both edges. In that case, I recommend a thinner coating on each surface because you do not want a great deal of squeeze out to clean up. I think parallel clamps are the most useful for gluing up panels because they conveniently rest upright on the bench top as you assemble your boards. The jaws are designed to remain parallel to each other so as not to apply uneven pressure that may force a cup into the panel. Even so, you may wish to alternate the direction of your clamps to provide more balance across the seam. As you apply clamping pressure, feel the seams and force the boards into alignment. If they're not perfectly flat, you may have difficulty getting them to align. Small clamps in the ends of the seams may help, but they do little for the seams at the center of the panel. Another option may be wooden calls that force things flat as the glue dries. Such things should only be needed with troublesome boards. If your boards are flat and straight and your edges are properly dressed, Light pressure with minimal clamps should be sufficient. As an alternative to clamps, you might try pocket screws. This isn't my go-to method because it requires more work and you must be sure you don't cut or drill into one of your screws later. But in a pinch, when you don't have enough suitable clamps or you don't have time to wait for glue to dry, pocket screws can save your bacon. I greatly prefer pocket hole jigs that create a low angle pocket for this purpose. If you have a standard 15 degree pocket hole jig, be sure your screws aren't so long that they protrude through the surface of the panel. Another useful aid is the addition of biscuits to an edge joint. These are not required to add strength since a regular glue joint will be stronger than the wood itself. But biscuits can make it a lot easier to align the seams of stubborn boards that cannot be made perfectly flat and straight on a jointer. These thick slabs of walnut were a good example. I don't recommend using biscuits if you don't need them, however, because over time the biscuit may shrink within the joint and that can pull the surface fibers downward, creating a slight indentation over the biscuit, which under certain light can be visible. You will always have some glue squeeze out to contend with, especially if you use too much glue or excessive clamping pressure. There are a lot of different opinions on how to deal with the squeeze out. I prefer to wait about an hour until the glue becomes thick like cottage cheese before scraping the excess away. That thin film that's left behind may then be removed by planing or sanding. Others prefer to deal with excess glue immediately by wiping it with a wet cloth. Technically, this may dilute the glue and force it into the fibers where it may interfere with your finish later. But if you're diligent and you use enough water, this method can work just fine. What you shouldn't do is wait until the glue dries hard because it'll be much more difficult to sand away and scraping hardened glue can tear wood fibers. If you did everything right, your panel should only require minimal sanding to level any imperfections in the seams. Are you sensing a pattern here? A good panel glue up is a multi-step process. One step makes the next easier and so on. Good material selection, good stock prep, good glue and clamp application, and good squeeze out management are all essential steps to a successful panel glue up. See you next time. I've been using DuraGrit carbide sanding products for years and I still haven't worn out the first ones I bought. If I have a rough edge to smooth, a corner to chamfer, or a curve to shape, more often than not, I'm reaching for one of these cleverly designed tools. It's one of those workshop secrets I wish I'd discovered long ago. Check out the link below this video to see for yourself. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.